The development of SpongeBob SquarePants and the life of the late Steven Hillenburg are some of the greatest and most inspirational stories behind a modern day cartoon. SpongeBob originated as this guy, named Bob the Sponge. During the late 80s, Hillenburg worked at the Orange County Marine Institute. He worked there for three years, and during this time created a comic titled The Intertitle Zone, as a fun way to help teach his students. The comic featured many characters based on undersea life, such as Bob the Sponge. Bob was the co-host of the comic, but is very different compared to the Bob we know now. After failing to get the comic published, Hillenburg found work at Nickelodeon, working on Rocco's modern life. During these early years at Nick, one of the writers on Rocco, Martin Olsen, read the Intertitle Zone and told Hillenburg that he should pitch his own show, believing in his potential. Hillenburg began to expand his idea of a world about walking, talking sea life, and took Bob the Sponge and made him into a little character named Sponge Boy. Hillenburg wanted his show to stand out, and through his unique life story of being a marine biologist turned animator, came up with something only he could, a show concept named Sponge Boy Ahoy. After developing the show for long enough, Hillenburg pitched Sponge Boy to Nickelodeon. It's said that Hillenburg went to the pitch meeting wearing a Hawaiian shirt and brought a fish tank full of models of characters from the show. He also played Hawaiian music throughout the pitch to really set the mood. Nickelodeon executive Eric Coleman described the setup as pretty amazing. Though no photos from this pitch exist today, it definitely sounds like one of the all-time greatest show pitches. As you can probably guess, Nickelodeon loved the idea and gave funding to produce a pilot episode of Sponge Boy, which would eventually become the first episode of the series, Help Wanted. That name, Sponge Boy Ahoy, stuck around for quite a while, appearing in concept art, surface storyboards for the pilot, and my personal favorite appearance, on the original painting from the end of the episode where SpongeBob is hired. It had to be edited to say SpongeBob when the name was changed. It was changed due to SpongeBoy already being trademarked, so Bob the Sponge returned. I just love early SpongeBob art, and the SpongeBoy era is truly something special. Production lasted through 1997, but SpongeBob wouldn't premiere until the Kids' Choice Awards in 1999, when the pilot aired following the event. Did you know that the original cut of Help Wanted had a different intro? This version of the episode, dubbed simply as the SpongeBob SquarePants pilot, only publicly aired once in this format on TV, during its original premiere. This original cut of the episode likely would have become completely lost, if not for VHS recordings of the original airing, as well as an official Nickelodeon home media release containing it. This, the best of Nicktoons 1998 VHS, was given away exclusively to crew members at the studio in 1998, and it contains the SpongeBob SquarePants pilot. He's even on the cover, using the same art as seen in the original title card. This VHS was made in very limited quantities and almost never shows up for sale, but if you can find one, you've got yourself a very special part of SpongeBob history. Another fun fact regarding this pilot is that on certain SpongeBob Season 1 releases, Help Wanted is missing. Now, you could assume this is because it was made before Season 1, but it's always grouped in with the rest of the season. The real reason this episode is sometimes neglected is due to the episode's inclusion of Tiny Tim's cover of the song Living in the Sunlight, Lovin' in the Moonlight. It's just because of some basic copyright issues, and to include it, they'd have to pay royalties. So they often choose not to, despite how significant it is as the first episode of the show. With that said, the episode has appeared on certain DVDs, but never as the original 1997 cut of the episode. Hopefully someday, a special Spongebob home media release can include a high-quality version of the original cut, so we'll always have this important piece of Spongebob history preserved in the best quality possible. <laughs> 